Hello, my friends. Welcome to this dark edition of Roland Rambles. If the video about time zone stuff comes out before this one, um, then you'll recognize that uh, it's the same time of day in the same whooshy garbage video because it's really, really dark and I don't have my best camera in here. Yay. So let's talk about something a little political. Stop paying people. Stop paying anyone who hates you and wants you dead. This might sound a little bit extreme. Like, what do you mean people want me dead? People hate me. Nobody, nobody really hates me. I'm just a normal, average, typical, uninteresting, you know, never rock the boat kind of person. Nobody really hates me. Nobody really wants me dead. Why, why would you say something like that? You know what, though? You might be right. That may be true. At least on an individual level. But I'm not talking about individuals so much as groups. There are people in the United States for whom the social contract was a long time ago, thrown in the shredder, poured uh, gasoline poured over, set on fire, stomped, and then shot out of a snowblower into the ocean, just to be sure. The social contract means nothing if it's not enforced by both sides, if it's not um, adhered to by both sides or all sides, however you want to view it. For a long time, there have been some people, um, I am specifically talking about the, um, you know, there's a lot of different words to describe them. I've mentioned them in other videos, but you can take your pick of terms, but in general, phrases used to refer to them are woke, leftist, social justice warrior, uh, and sometimes even Democrat. But um, obviously not everybody is the same, so broad brushing a group based on a label that draws in millions of people may not be the best thing to do. Um, feminist is another one, by the way. But I do think that the feminist and social justice warrior and woke terms capture it better than Democrat, because not all Democrats are quite that stupid. But let's talk about what these people have done over the past, I'd say, 12 to 15 years. There, there has been a notable, like it first came to my attention in the late 2000s, but really um, jarred me in 2012 when Donglegate happened, and I just noticed it's getting very dark, so let me, oh, yeah, that light is very bright, so uh, that's a thing that happened. So we're just gonna use that light and maybe that light, and then maybe turn this down a bit so I'm not quite so wishy. Anyway, um, back in the day when the old Donglegate, you know, we're not doing, we're not doing that. Um, back in the day when Donglegate happened, Adria Richards um, got two guys fired from their jobs because she heard them making dongle jokes at a tech conference behind her and couldn't keep her nose out of other people's business. She thought that she was like the Joan of Arc um, for little girls wanting to do to, to get into code or some crap like that. This is this whole stupid victim narrative, blah, blah, blah. It's your, your classic internet Tumblr feminist garbage. And it was pretty ridiculous, but the problem is this had real consequences. The two men who she reported to the con on Twitter, um, and keep in mind she's a marketing person, so um, she has tens of thousands of followers because her job was a technical evangelist, which is a really stupid uh, neologism, I suppose, for a salesperson. And that meant that everybody, everybody that followed her now saw these guys get put on blast publicly and the companies were deluged with cancel mobs, what we didn't call cancel mobs back then, but we know they sure are now. Um, cancel mobs just spamming the companies until they had no choice but to fire these guys, not because they did anything wrong, but because these psychos were out for blood and the companies were losing business and having their operations disrupted by these seething idiots, um, all because some woman got horribly, horribly offended by something really, really stupid and naive 
uh, not naive, but just like a silly juvenile joke that is on par with something a six-year-old would, would come up with. Like, oh, oh dongles. <laughs> that sounds like that sounds like the word that people use for for the male uh, reproductive organ. That's funny. <laughs> like it's just it's such a mild joke. No adult should even remotely be offended by that. It's just like dick jokes have been a part of um, humor for a long time, long, long time, and I don't really understand it. But anyway, this is not about Adria Richards. Um, but it is about people that are like her that um, have come out ever since. When that happened, I think in 2012 or 2013, it really kind of opened my eyes to how bad things were starting to get. And it was the first hint of this, this cancer infesting society, infecting all of Western society that today is referred to as woke, but classically we called them SJWs and feminists, um, Tumblrinas even. Now, the only reason that I had to go into all that is because you won't understand what I'm talking about if you don't understand the people I'm talking about. These people have escalated beyond simply trying to get you fired from your job because they heard a joke they didn't like. It's so much more serious than that today. These people have gotten to the point where they want to exclude your existence if you do not conform to exactly the dogma that they have laid out. And that dogma changes on an almost daily basis. It's, it's very mercurial, non-committal. Um, there's a lot of uh, fluid definitions and one-upsmanship. Even um, their own get eaten regularly by their ideology. And these people, they do not like you. They do not like you because they think the personal is political. They say that everything that you do, whether you intend for it to be political or not, every action you take has far-reaching political consequences and ramifications. Everything that you do, every choice you make, every action you take is a political statement with political repercussions. It's serious business. It's totally serious business, you guys. The internet is serious business and the internet's coming to get you. So, because everything is political, even if it's just you deciding to go and get a cheap burger at McDonald's because you're hungry and really tired and just don't feel like doing, you know, cooking tonight or whatever. Just you going and getting a burger has all of these far-reaching implications. Like, you're eating meat, so, oh, you must hate animals because you're eating, you're eating the flesh of an animal and you're eating fast food, which means that you're also supporting all this, the, the factory foods and, and more generally. You're supporting the, the farmers using machines that pollute the atmosphere. So you're, you're anti-environmentalist because you're eating a hamburger that was, um, uh, that's on a bun that was made with wheat that was harvested by a machine, you know, and processed by machines. You, you um, you know, you, you, you take chicken's eggs to make the mayonnaise and, um, you just, you get the ideas. Everything has to be nitpicked down to the point to just to absolute absurdity. Um, and all of it is political. And by political, what they mean is it affects other people. And no, of course, me going to McDonald's and eating a hamburger does not mean that 10 new dairy farms open up and start chopping cow necks off. That's not how it works. But that's the way that these people behave. And because these people dehumanize you by making it out like your actions are evil, therefore you're evil, therefore you're not a human, your life is not valuable or meaningful, and in fact it's beyond that. So that's the thing is I can fully accept the concept that a person's life has no intrinsic value because it doesn't. Because value is determined by other people. Your value is not determined by yourself. That's your own concept of self-worth. But your value is ultimately determined by other people who judge it. And if other people judge that you do not provide enough value, then you're not important to them. You hold no value to them. But there are three states here, not two. 
You can be the kind of person who says, all people have value. You can be the kind of person who says, all people do not have any inherent or intrinsic value. And you can be the kind of person who says that all people uh, who don't have value are taking rather than giving, and therefore are a net negative, and therefore are not worthy to be called human. And the problem with radicals in general, and feminists, social justice warriors, leftists, woke tards, etc. in particular, is that this position, this negative value position, is jumped to immediately upon disagreement with them. Even the most minor disagreement, you are not human, you are evil. Because you dared to disagree with them, you are basically Hitler. But why are you basically Hitler? It, it's not because you literally are. It's not because you're actually going to go and uh, find a way to, you know, mass murder people or something. No, it's because you and people like you all doing this one thing supposedly maybe somehow might result in other bad things cascading, which then supposedly might result in even more bad things cascading. And a slippery slope fallacy here, there, and everywhere until you finally have Hitler 2.0. Somehow, you know, through, through all the slippery slopes. So, if you wonder why it is that you get called a fascist or, or other people, get called a fascist, a racist, a sexist, a bigot, a transphobe, a homophobe, any of these terms, it's not because you've actually done anything wrong, it's because you've disagreed with a lunatic. A lunatic who does not like you and who in fact hates you and thinks the world would be better off if you died. And frankly, a lot of them are willing to go to extreme lengths to make sure that the dying part actually happens. Or at least as much dying as possible. Um, there are way too many people on the left that are more than willing to come after your job, nuke your livelihood, um, split your family ties, get rid of all your friendships, uh, get you nuked off of social media and bank and other platforms. Like, yeah, debanking you. Literally getting your banks to close your accounts because you're an evil Nazi fascist, blah, 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 even though you're not. They go, you're too hot. We don't want to do business with you. Please take your money elsewhere. Even though you didn't do anything wrong, these people bombard the, the basically bully other people into unpersoning you from society until you are, while you may not be dead, you perhaps might be thinking, at least in the back of your head, that maybe that would have been a better outcome. And that's not a great place to be. But these people don't care. Now, let's get to the first part of the sentence. Don't give people money who hate you and want you dead. Don't give people money. Well, how do you give these people money? Look around you. Look at every industry that is infested with these people, with these rainbow-haired bugs that infect software and products, brands, services, you name it. They're all over the place. Everywhere that comes out with like a big, like um, any of those, like the, the, the thing with Target with the pride clothes, you know, you can take your pick. You can find no shortage of places where there are signs of these people. Video games are actually a really big one right now as of this filming. Well, there's been a lot of discussion over the past year about ugly women in video games, about video games going through sensitivity writers that make uh, that make the character say body type one and body type two instead of male and female. You know, if you see this, this wokeification, this feminist sanitizing, um, that, you know, this, this, um, this catering to trans beyond what is reasonable. If you see this in a product or service of any sort, <clears throat> just don't do business with them. That's it. That's all you have to do to get rid of these people. That's all you have to do to completely strip them out of society. While they can get you stripped of your job if you're foolish enough to open your mouth and say that you disagree, the, the truth is that you have the power because you pay their paychecks. 
you're the one paying for it. And how are you paying for it? You're paying for it every time you go and buy that video game that has those woke characters in it, that has the ability to, to make, uh, you know, that, that pretends like gender is fluid and all this stuff. You know, you have the power to not do that. When Target came out with those clothes where it's like children's clothes that are tuck friendly for girls, girls don't have penises, so that makes no sense. It, it's clear that it's meant to trans children. A lot of people, including myself, think that an eight-year-old shouldn't be thinking about what gender they are. They should be worrying about having fun, playing with dolls or trucks, swimming, you know, going for a walk, spending time with their parents, eating out, not going, oh, I'm actually, I'm actually a boy, not a girl, and um, should I, should I take something to make sure that I don't grow breasts? Like, eight-year-olds shouldn't have to deal with that. So the fact that they come out with a piece of clothing that has this thing where some kid can be, can pretend to be a different gender or whatever, but then, oh, but we're accommodating your, your junk that's not supposed to be there if you actually were that. Well, we know what's going on there. We know that there is an actual agenda behind that. Someone had to design that and bring that to market and offer it up for sale. The way you say that you don't approve of this is you don't buy it. And more importantly, you don't pay the people who allowed it to get there. Bud Light, prime example. Bud Light made the mistake of giving this um, personalized can to Dylan Mulvaney, who for a long time, people on the internet already knew. was th this, this guy was notorious for pretending to be a girl not even trying to actually be a woman, just acting like the caricature of a stupid woman. Like, seriously, the, most women are offended by this moron bimbo um, stereotype that Dylan Mulvaney portrayed. It was, it was just not good. <laughs> And women don't like it because women don't like the idea that they're really that dense and stupid and ditzy. And, you know, there's a lot of women that aren't. It, it frankly is degrading to think that, oh, I, oh, a guy wants to be a girl now. And to do that, he has to act like a moron because that's what women are. Oh, God, when, when you say it like that, it sounds really bad. Because that's bad. That is not okay. But you know what? That person, that person got to go and talk to, you know, President Biden and be in the White House and, you know, discuss the, the future of the country and get invited to the White House for portraying women in a horribly negative light. That's just, you can't make this stuff up. It's so stupid. But Bud Light, after this person, before the White House thing, I think, but this person was already really notorious on the internet for his moronic shenanigans. And, and he was a known comedian and a pretty much a failed comedian. So, of course, hey, this gets more attention than comedy. Make, make a joke out of being a woman. And just kept going with it because it got him popular, right? Well, this person, Bud Light, decided to give a can and be like, hey, do some ads for us. Now, I will say... It does seem silly that we just cherry pick this one specific person because there's no shortage of companies that have provided this exact same kind of like, hey, we'll give you money if you uh, make some ads endorsing our products sort of deal with other people that are trans influencers and such. But here's the thing. At least to some extent, the, the majority of these people that are out there that are trans influencers or whatever, at least to some extent, if not to a complete extent, um, genuinely believe and behave as if they are gender dysphoric, as if they really do believe in what they're saying. But Dylan Mulvaney was in a pretty unique case because Dylan Mulvaney was very clearly not genuine. The whole thing was a caricature and joke at the expense of women. Now, if you portray this this caricature of women. You're just acting like women are stupid. To be a woman, you have to be stupid. Well, what happens when 
this massive beer brand that's no, most of the customers of whom are like redneck, biker, bar brawler, you know, the stereotypes just range. But Bud Light was a beer that a ton of people drank. And do you really think that a bunch of rednecks in a bar want to be associated with this guy clearly mocking women and pulling the trans card just for the clout, not for genuine reasons, but just for clout, very painfully, obviously clout chasing. Do you really think that that, that was a good idea? Be like, hey, hey, yo, hey, 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 biker bro, guess what, biker bro? You want to be a real badass biker bro to all your other biker bros? You know what to do if you want to be a badass biker bro? <laughs> Get the fake woman beer. That'll teach them. You be the top bro by being the fake woman. Yeah, it went over just as well as you thought. And to this day, uh, Bud Light has never recovered. And they shouldn't. And that is the power that you have. All that people did. I mean, people made jokes about them too. But in the end, the one thing, the one thing that caused the downfall of Bud Light was not that all these, you know, awful right-wing lunatics got together and bully, cancel culture, blah, 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 on Bud Light. What happened is they saw Bud Light offer up a commercial representing the brand. They did not feel that the brand's representation went along with them and what they wanted. Therefore, they took their money elsewhere and bought Modelo or whatever. No, I don't know. It's not Bud Light and ultimately not most of the Anheuser-Busch brands either. So they decided not to purchase the product because the product no longer represented them. The product made it clear that they did not want their original customer base and the customers left. The customers did not spend the money there anymore. That's all that you have to do. Don't give them money. Don't pay these people money for hurting you, for wanting you dead, for thinking that you are Hitler. Do not give money to corporations that are run by these people, that are infested with these people. That's all you have to do. Now granted, it's harder than it seems because of things like Unilever, Procter & Gamble, these giant international mega corporations <clears throat> that have their fingers in hundreds of brands, that have subsidiaries all over the, the world, <clears throat> it will be very difficult for you to avoid everything. But at a minimum, for example, if you, um, Ben & Jerry's came out with Pecan Resist in select markets. I wonder why it was in select markets. Well, considering it was activist ice cream meant to protest Donald Trump's existence, yeah, I wonder why it was in limited markets. Didn't go over very well with people who heard about it that were out of those markets, and so people stopped buying Ben & Jerry's. The problem is, you don't buy Ben & Jerry's, but then you go and buy any of their other products, you know, I think Unilever has Ben & Jerry's, I can't remember, but it's either Unilever or P&G. One of them has Ben & Jerry's. Well, you might not buy Ben & Jerry's, but you buy a bunch of their other stuff. You probably buy their razors, you probably buy their shampoos, you probably buy their breakfast cereals, you probably buy a whole bunch of products by this giant mega corporation. But if you don't buy Ben & Jerry's, at least the Ben & Jerry's brand loses money, even though the mega corp probably still gets your money on the other end somehow. So at a minimum, you make the woke brand not worth it within the company, and they'll sell it off or shut it down. Um, and this, this actually happened with, with razors too. When Gillette pulled that feminist commercial thing, um, people stopped buying Gillette razors. I, for one, have never bought a Gillette razor since. Um, but then people were like, oh, I'm gonna, uh, uh, oh, I hate Gillette, and I, and, and I hate Ben & Jerry's, so I'm gonna stop buying Gillette and Ben & Jerry's and, and, and uh, instead of Gillette, I'm going to, I'm going to just not eat ice cream. Okay. And then, and I'm going to, and I'm going to buy, um, Dollar Shave Club instead of Gillette. Well, the company that owns Ben and Jerry's owns Dollar Shave Club. So you bailed on Gillette, but then you jumped right over to the company that owns Ben and Jerry's, the other people you're trying to boycott. So in the end, they still got your money. They still got your money, man. Come on. Just... You can't make this stuff up. These these mega corporations don't care. But if you can if you can at least boycott the brand, it does make a difference. It's not as big of a difference, but it does make their balance sheets look a little bit light. And you know what? If you can tell friends, if you can convince friends and family and everything, 
to also just not spend the money. Because that's what boycotting is. Boycotting doesn't mean that you have to go stand out in front of the headquarters with protest signs and tell everyone that loudly and proudly in front of their headquarters entrance that you're not buying their products. A boycott can be as simple as you keeping your money or spending it somewhere else with something that has not yet made it clear that they hate you and want you dead. So just don't pay them. And if you don't have a choice because all these giant corporations, this very small cabal of humongous multinational corporations seem to run almost everything, every brand you can imagine, if you can't avoid the whole corporation, at least avoid the brand and, and make it die through attrition. And if enough of us take our money away from these people that make it clear they hate us but they love our money, then they'll have to go away. Because guess what? If they don't have the money, then they can't do anything to us. They do not have an advertising platform from which to say that all men are evil, scummy, misogynist pigs that hate women. They don't have that platform if you take it away from them. So take it away from them. Anyway, I gotta go. I'm stopping at a regional food chain called Bojangles that really, really ought to come to your area soon, I hope. Because if you don't get Bojangles where you live, you're missing out. That damn chicken is fantastic. Gotta go. Like, comment, subscribe, and all that crap. Take care. I smell a biscuit in my future, boys.